Now on Coast TV News. Police are investigating an armed robbery at a liquor store in Milford. What store, when, and more details from police. President Joe Biden in Rehoboth Beach this weekend as a temporary flight restriction is in effect. The reason for the restriction. A car crash involving a golf cart in Clarksville injures two people. What details we know and an update from police on the two people injured. A mild night awaits here on Delmarva and that trend will continue through the rest of the weekend. I'll have more details on your weekend forecast in just moments. This is Coast TV News at 11. Good evening, I'm Britt Leone. Welcome to Coast TV News at 11. Thanks for joining us tonight. Today, a U.S. Coast Guard helicopter under the direction of the North American Aerospace Defense Command responded to a civilian aircraft over Rehoboth Beach. The aircraft violated a temporary flight restriction area around 10.55 a.m. this morning and was escorted until it landed safely at a nearby airport. The flight restriction is in effect as President Joe Biden is in Rehoboth Beach this weekend. Police are investigating an armed robbery at a liquor store on at Liquor Stop on South Rehoboth Boulevard in Milford. That happened Friday. Police say it was around 1 p.m. when a man went into the store and showed a gun demanding money from an employee. Police say the employee gave the man the money and he left the store. Police say troopers searched the area for the man but didn't find him. Police say there were no reported injuries, thankfully, and they say the man is described as a white man wearing dark colored clothes and sunglasses. Delaware State Police are investigating an accident in Clarksville involving a car and a golf cart. Police say the crash happened Friday night on Omar Road. We say as a result of the crash, two people were taken to a hospital and are now in critical condition. Police are still investigating the crash. We're taking a live look now into Ocean City with our 45th Street Tap House camera. It looks like a calm and quiet evening over the water there. Our first alert meteorologist, Jeanette Gallardo, joins us now with a look at our weather. Good evening, Jeanette. Good evening, Britt. We do have that calm weather tonight and a very mild night ahead for us here in Del on Delmarva. Here's a live look into Salisbury from our Tidal Health camera where the temperature is sitting at 51 degrees. Now that high temperature today did manage to climb even into the 70s in some locations. 71 was the high in Salisbury, 69 in Georgetown, 66 in Ocean City. It was notably warmer today compared to the last few days that we've had this this week. In fact, we saw those temperatures in the freezing range Thursday and Friday morning. Friday morning especially, we woke up at 28 degrees. Very, very cold, but we're gradually starting to see a warm-up. In fact, even right now, compared to the last 24 hours, we are sitting 8 degrees warmer in Georgetown, 9 degrees warmer in Salisbury, and 13 degrees warmer in Ocean City compared to this time last night. We are seeing those temperatures anywhere from 49 in Georgetown town to 49 in Milton as well up to 60 degrees right now at the Indian River Inlet so it is definitely a much more not mild night in comparison to what we saw especially on Thursday and Friday and as we head through the rest of the night we will see that temperature staying within the 40s throughout the overnight so we are going to be seeing or rather not needing any of those extra blankets tonight but we do have more cold on the way I'll have more on that in a few more minutes. All right, thank you, Jeanette. We've got cold on the way and we've got a change tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. We fall back when daylight saving time ends. For most of us, that means an extra hour of sleep and brighter mornings. Benjamin Fr Franklin actually proposed a version of daylight saving time in 1784 as a way to save money on candles and lamp oil. I thought that was fascinating, but it wasn't until 1918 that it was implemented here in the United States. Hawaii and Arizona don't participate in changing their clocks. Some lawmakers have been pushing to make daylight saving time permanent, but the legislation has been stalled in Congress. A six-month closure of Plantation Road in Lewis will start this Monday. The long-awaited and dreaded closure from this connector you see to the second Lowe's entrance means the Five Points Project is moving right along. Detours to reach the other end of Plantation Road, Route 9 and Route 1 will take drivers on more local roadways. Dot says this closure will allow for the finishing touches to the roundabout. 
Students in the Milford School District get to stay home on Monday. The district says November 6th is a professional development day for staff. The district will also be closed on Friday, November 10th in honor of Veterans Day. Police have identified 21-year-old Joshua Lissinger of Middletown as the man who died in a crash in Middletown this past Saturday. Police say it happened here on Blackbird Landing Road east of Route 13. Police say on Saturday the 28th around 3.30 a.m. Lissinger was speeding in a black Chrysler on Blackbird Landing Road when he drove off the road and crashed into a ditch and then into a utility pole. The car then hit the driveway culvert of a home and went airborne, hitting another utility pole. The car stopped in another ditch and then caught on fire. Lissinger was unfortunately pronounced dead at the scene. A group of students gathered today in Salisbury to make a difference in their community. We love to see it. Salisbury University Student Government Association hosted today's 19th annual big event community cleanup. You can see the kids cleaning up there, raking leaves. The university says hundreds of students came out this morning doing yard work and mulching for some 26 university neighbors. The Delaware State Fire Marshal wants to remind you to check the batteries in your smoke detectors. Test them to make sure they're working. The state says Delaware has had 11 fire fatalities this year. Eight of those who died didn't have working smoke detectors in their homes. In national news, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is meeting with key Middle Eastern powers at a summit in Jordan. He met with them today. The Israeli military again called on Gaza residents to move south as it focuses its offensive against Hamas in Gaza City and northern parts. Rob Kirkpatrick has the latest developments. America's top diplomat joined Arab leaders and foreign ministers for a high-stakes meeting on Saturday as the Israel-Hamas war rages on. But Secretary of State Antony Blinken was at odds with Arab partners as he emphasized again U.S. opposition to a ceasefire. It's our view that uh, a ceasefire now would simply leave Hamas in place, able to regroup and repeat what it did on October 7th. Calls for a ceasefire have grown after Israel admitted to targeting an ambulance in a medical convoy near a hospital in Gaza City on Friday that Hamas-run health authorities say killed 15 people. Israel claimed it targeted the ambulance because it was being used by Hamas. We're going out of our way to prevent civilian casualties, not only by asking civilians to move, calling them to move, arranging a place for them to be, which is safe. Well, and it cannot be justified under any pretext, and it will not bring Israel security. It will not bring the region peace. Blinken said the meeting with Arab leaders was productive, and all parties are committed to working together on the issue. We may have different views and positions on certain necessary steps to achieve that objective. Uh, but today we reaffirmed our individual commitments to continuing to work for that end, an end that we share. I'm Rob Kirkpatrick reporting. There's more news to cover tonight. Dogs on the beach and the boardwalk, how people in Rehoboth Beach feel about expanding those hours into the summertime. Millsboro moves forward with a marijuana ban, what the restrictions mean for the town. And construction is still in place for the overpass in Milton at Route 16 and 1. The progress of the work and the traffic it's causing on the roadways. We'll be back in just 60 seconds. We get new inventory in all the time. Literally every single day. Things that you can buy off the floor. You come in, you see it, you can take it with you that day or we deliver the same week. I mean, I know that if you order something online, it's weeks upon weeks before receiving it. In stock, designer home furnishings, 50 to 80% off every day. You right. see it today, you can take it today. Or we load it up. We can help load it <laughs> up. Let us make your house a home. At that furniture store. Three miles south of Del Mar. When you step into a luxury bathroom from Coastal Bay Construction, it becomes your sanctuary. Relaxing, refreshing, invigorating. Coastal Bay Construction is your local bath remodeling expert and can help you transform your space into something you'll love. Get the luxury bathroom you want with easy access and services that make cleaning a breeze. Call Coastal Bay for your free quote with two years free financing or $1,200 off your whole bath. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's Coastal Bay Construction. 
A lot has happened across Delmarva this week. Mallory Metzner has you covered with top stories in this week's Week in Review. On Monday, neighbors were a bit mixed on how helpful a new overpass in Milton will be. The road work is currently building the bridge cars will be taking southbound on Route 1 over Route 16. The price tag for this overpass is $23 million and is expected to be completed sometime in late 2025. The Cape and Lopen School District says it is currently working to adjust boundary lines for its five elementary schools. The district says it believes a number of students are being enrolled when they do not live in the district, and therefore a new tip line is in place to anonymously report students who go to the school but don't live in the district. On Wednesday, a local woman from Mexico put out tamales, coffee, and bread to remember people she loves who are no longer here. Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is traditionally celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. Code Purple shelters were open on Thursday after opening early for the season due to the unexpected cold weather. The shelters are seeking donations and volunteers in Delaware. On Friday, the Lewis Rehoboth Rotary Club installed more than 500 flags outside of Cape and Lopen High School. This Veterans Day display honors those who serve and have served our country and local communities. For the first time this year, the flags will be illuminated at night. For your weekend review, I'm Mallory Metzner. Still ahead on Coast TV News at 11, Millsboro moves forward with a marijuana ban. What the restrictions mean for people in the town? We have enjoyed much more mild temperatures this weekend compared to earlier in the week, but the frigid cold is not gone for good. Stick around to find out when the cold air will return. All the natural light of the great outdoors, right in your dining room. Shell Brothers, find your great indoors. All the solitude of the outdoors, without the bad Wi-Fi connection. Shell Brothers, find your great indoors. Pain and immobility take you away from everything you love to do. That's why at Pam Health Rehabilitation Hospital of Georgetown, our focus is to rebuild your life by providing high-quality, post-acute care to those who suffered from serious injuries or illness. With state-of-the-art facilities, advanced robotics, highly trained professionals, and the highest level of rehabilitation care. It's all about gains. Gain your movement, gain your independence, gain your life back. Pam Health Rehabilitation Hospital of Georgetown. There's much to do and so much to see in the naturally charming towns of Maryland's coast. Worcester County. Pocomoke City offers a quaint downtown area with waterfront dining. Snow Hill, located on the Pocomoke River. Berlin, filled with unique shops and farm-to-table restaurants. Ocean Pines with community parks. Ocean City with 10 miles of beach coastline. And Assateague Island National Seashore with beautiful beaches and wild ponies. Discover all there is to do and see in Maryland's naturally charming towns. Go to visitmarylandscoast.org. Hi, I'm Delmarva Dave. We purchased this house in less than 30 days. And I'm Christina, and the owners didn't have to make any repairs. Inherited, overwhelmed, or on the verge of foreclosure, we can buy your home so you can move on. We buy all sorts of property, like this mobile home, even if they're in serious disrepair. For as is, fast cash offers on residential or commercial property anywhere on Delmarva, check out our local five-star reviews. And then call or visit us at delmarvadave.com today. I hope everyone is enjoying these much more mild conditions the way I am. I'm not a big fan of the cold, so I'm definitely enjoying this a little bit more. Here's a live look into Seaford from our Tidal Health camera, where the temperature is sitting at 48 degrees, much warmer than those freezing temperatures we saw earlier in the week. And a big reason for that is actually the cloud cover that we have in place. That is allowing our temperatures to stay a little bit warmer tonight. 49 currently in Georgetown, 48 in Red, and 49 in Milton. We're looking at 53 currently in Rehoboth Beach. 54 in Bethany Beach, 48 is a temperature in Selbyville. Here is that cloud cover I was referencing just a second ago. It is affecting the entire peninsula at this time, so that cloud cover it kind of acts like a blanket. It 
traps that heat close to the surface, close to the ground, as opposed to letting it escape into space. And that is going to help keep those temperatures in the 40s as we head through the rest of tonight. Also, those calm winds are going to help us out a little bit as well. We are going to see a quiet night, especially compared to what we saw earlier in the week. We woke up to a temperature of 31 on Thursday, 28 on Friday. And we're already seeing that gradual increase as we head through the rest of the weekend. We are are going to wake up tomorrow around 8 a.m. Temperature in the 50s, 53 in Millsboro, 59 in Dewey Beach, a little bit warmer at 60 in Rehoboth Beach. And as we head closer to lunchtime Sunday, we are going to see those temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, closer to 60 degrees along the coast. So it is going to be a beautiful day. We are going to see that cloud cover retrieve as we head through the afternoon. And by the time we get to 9 p.m. Sunday, those temperatures are still going to be hovering right around the 50s and 60s. So it is going to be a rather warm night as we head into Sunday night. And as we head through the rest of the week, you'll notice we have a little bit of a roller coaster in temperatures. We are going to see a high of 64 on Monday, climbing to 73 Tuesday, back down by Wednesday, and then 75 on Thursday. The reason for that we have a few cold fronts on the way and a few disturbances, but the real chill in the air is going to arrive Thursday night into Friday, even Saturday, and that is going to be bringing us some rain as well as early as Thursday night into Friday and Friday night. And by the time we get into Saturday, that cold air is really going to settle in, so we are going to be feeling a lot more winter-like again by the time we get into next weekend. Here is a look at your Paul Davis restoration and home remodeling seven days forecast. We do stay dry for most of the week. It's not until we get to about Friday with that cold front that we do bring in those rain chances back into the forecast. And you'll notice Saturday morning, you'll be waking up to a temperature of 36 degrees. 36 degrees is a little too cold for me. Thank you, Jeanette. Millsboro Town Council is moving forward with its proposed ban on marijuana sales in town limits. The council will hear the ordinance and possibly vote on the ban at its upcoming meeting this Monday. That's November 6th at 7 p.m. Rehoboth Beach and Bethany Beach passed similar ordinances banning marijuana businesses like retail stores and manufacturing facilities on August 18th. Advocates for the homeless say this can be the worst time of the year for the homeless and temperatures are only going to drop even more. Coast TV's Charles Reinert shows us how these groups are preparing for the upcoming winter. Warm beds ready for those without a home. The dropping temperatures have caused Code Purple to open two locations in Dover to get people out of the freezing nighttime temperatures. CFO Ennio Emanuel says it had to be done. I messaged the team and I was like, I think we need to open up early. Um, what do you all think? And everyone was in agreement. Um, we had the facilities ready. So, you know, it was one of those things that didn't really catch us off guard. But that's why it's really important to be always kind of on our end, to always be talking about this type of thing, to always be aware. Emmanuel says usually Code Purple opens the doors the first week of December. He said on top of the cold temperatures, the lack of places to stay for the homeless and simply having the manpower motivated a decision. Over in Georgetown, Higher Ground Outreach founder Lou Hernandez says he has seen more people search for help with the cold temperatures rolling in. Temperatures. Uh, you know, dropping as quick as they do is very dangerous for, for them, you know, especially if they're if they don't have a place to lay their head. They're out, you know, sitting on cold concrete somewhere. Both Hernandez and Emmanuel said they are looking for donations on everything from hygiene products to jackets. According to Emmanuel, there was a shelter that was opened in Sussex County, this one at Avenue Methodist Church in Milford. I'm Charles Reiner, Coast TV News. After the break here on Coast TV News at 11, dogs on the beach and the boardwalk. How people in Rehoboth Beach feel about expanding those hours into the summertime. And one Milford man honored for his service in Vietnam. The story behind the local hero. That's up next on Coast TV News at 11. The world's number one selling farm tractor. Easy to operate and more powerful than your average tractor. Mahindra tractors. Push more, pull more, lift more. With more torque and lower engine maintenance, Mahindra tractors are rugged and tough. We know how much you love your land, so we want you to love your tractor. Get your next Mahindra tractor today. Southern States of Milford, improving farming and improving life. Rooted since 1948. 
At Atlantic General Hospital, we've been busy. Busy expanding healthcare services that are second to none in our region. From cancer care, and women's health services, to orthopedics, gastroenterology, and more, we provide advanced health technologies delivered by top providers. Expert care every day. It's what you can count on from Atlantic General Hospital. I'll take a grande, no foam, triple cap, double pump vanilla latte with three and a half ice cubes, slightly shaken, extra whip. Yeah, that's gonna be an upcharge. Great! This one is on my Kasasa cash back checking account. Uh-huh. Kasasa pays me cash back on everyday debit card purchases, plus refunds on ATM withdrawal fees. Go on, take back banking and treat yourself to monthly cash rewards. Kasasa checking is proudly offered at County Bank. 82, 86, what a nice commission for me. So what do you think? We're going to give you a free half a roof, give you new gutters, give you a gutter guard, give you a vacation for nothing. Don't be fooled by roofing sales tactics. Remember, free isn't always free. We climb and inspect every roof to provide an expert, honest opinion. Watch out for guys like this. Serving Sussex County. There's good. There's better. And, and then, then there's more. Isn't that Frank? <laughs> Famous for flying, this weekend Mil Milford native Al Burke was indicted into the Delaware Aviation Hall of Fame, among five others in the state, for his impressive resume as an Army helicopter pilot. Coast TV News reporter Tori Seagrave shows us his many accomplishments and his impact on the Milford community. Let me introduce you to Al Burke. Burke served as a helicopter pilot for 35 years from rescuing families in the Italian Alps to hovering over Germany. But to Burke, he was just doing his duty. What I've done over the years, I never looked at it as I never did it because I thought somewhere down the road I would be recognized. I did it because it was my job. Just walking through Burke's home, you can tell his time as a pilot was nothing short of significant. A silver star, a purple heart, even a Legion of Merit medal were awarded to Burke. Among his many accomplishments, one that stands out is just how long he spent in the sky. My one tour in Vietnam, I flew 1,349 hours, um, and that was in a year. And if you, if you do the math, that was, that's a lot of flying, and I don't know anybody, um, I don't know anybody else that got that many hours in one year. Even before joining the fight, Burke won several trophies and medals for running cross country and wrestling at Milford High School. I probably would have taken first in state my senior year had I not broken my wrist. And continues to run marathons like the Skyway 10K and the Outrun Hunger 5K at the young age of 77. I tell people it's great being in my age group because there's nobody else there. <laughs> at the end of the day, Burke hopes people will see his contributions as a pilot and give remembrance to those who didn't make it home. When I was in Vietnam, we saw people, I saw friends, I had friends die. I, I don't want people to ever forget all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we all can be free. To learn more about Burke's story and other inductees, you can visit their plaques at the Delaware Aviation Hall of Fame. I'm Tori Seagraves in Milford, Coast TV News. In your health news tonight, a foundation has been created in Matthew Perry's name to help those struggling with addiction. The foundation launched on Friday less than a week after the actor's death from an apparent drowning. In a statement, the Matthew Perry Foundation says it wants to honor the actor's legacy by, quote, making a difference in as many lives as possible, end quote. Perry, who played Chandler Bing on Friends, has been open about his lifelong efforts to recover from drug and alcohol addiction. He detailed his journey in a 2022 memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. In an interview last year, Perry says he hoped to be remembered most for his efforts helping others struggling with addiction. Have you ever wanted to walk your dog on the beach or boardwalk in the summertime? The city of Rehoboth Beach says lots of dog owners have asked for that, but people are actually pretty divided on this issue. Coast TV's Elisa Weber takes us to Rehoboth Beach to show us why some are excited while others are saying, doggone it. 
Kristen Uzadis frequently walks her dog in Rehoboth Beach during the off-season. Uzadis wants to see a change to the rules about dogs being allowed on the beach and boardwalk because she says her dog enjoys being on the beach. I love the idea. I understand that if it's too busy, maybe there should be like restricted times or something, but it would be nice. Currently in Rehoboth Beach, dogs are not allowed on the beach or boardwalk any time from May 1st to September 30th. The city says it decided to create a poll about possibly allowing dogs on the beach and boardwalk during the summer because it is a hot topic in the area. Due to the increase in visitors during the summer, one person who spoke with Coast TV believes this is not a good idea. I think that when it's really crowded out here, the same way people get spooked, so should so might the dogs. I think it's just not good for their health. I think it's not good for the people and the dogs. Since mixing the large summer crowds with dogs could cause some commotion, one dog owner says if they change the rules, it makes it more important for dog owners to make the right decision. I think that if there's responsible dog owners, um, that yes, that that would be a good idea to let the dogs interact during the summer months also. So what happens next? The city says the Rehoboth Beach Animal Committee will present the issue to the commissioners at the December 4th meeting. The city hasn't yet made a decision for or against a rule change just yet. We'll be right back after this. Coastal Del Marva has so much going on. Food, friends, fun, and more. Why don't we just show you? Coast Life, weekdays at 4 on Coast TV. With Food Lion Feeds, I get to give back in ways I never imagined. What are you doing? I'm picking tomatoes. From growing fresh produce for our neighbors in need, to remodeling local pantries so we can help even more people. But my favorite thing hey, is delivering hot meals to make Miss Baker's day. Here to fill tables and hearts with hope. Food Lion Feeds, here for every moment. So are you ready to start enjoying some more time almost outdoors? Of course, I'm talking about your screen porch. If you want to protect your furniture, even in the worst rainstorms, the porch protection system will keep your investment protected and dry. Just drop the curtains when there's bad weather and roll them up when it's good again. So call Porch Protection Systems today for a free estimate so you can start enjoying more of your time almost outdoors year round. For more information about porch protection systems, visit Delmarva Experts on WBOC.com. New updated COVID vaccines are now available. This updated COVID vaccine protects you from the Omicron variant XBB, currently one of the most common variants. No matter how many previous vaccines you have received, you should get the new COVID vaccine. Antibodies from previous doses may have gone down, no longer providing protection. Everyone five years and older should get one updated COVID vaccine. Those six months through four years should get one to three doses, depending on previous doses and manufacturer. Evening and Saturday appointments are available. Call La Red Health Center today. 20 years ago, I escaped from you. And then you kidnapped me. What's in the basement? Gabrielle! Gabrielle! Found Tuesday on NBC and streaming on Peacock. It was a two-for-one for NASA's Lucy spacecraft as it conducted its very first asteroid flyby earlier this week. The spacecraft flew by the small asteroid Dinkanesh on Wednesday. It's in our solar system's main asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. That is super fascinating. I always love seeing those news about outer space. I've, I think if I were a meteorologist, maybe I'd be an astronomer. I'm so fascinated by it. But hey, enough of that. Let's take a look at your Paul Davis restoration and home remodeling 10-day forecast. Now, Brent did tell you at the top of the newscast, but don't forget to set your clocks back tonight. Get that extra hour of sleep. We are going to be seeing a beautiful day tomorrow. Temperature rising to 68 degrees. We'll have plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. A little bit of cloud cover to start the day. And as we head into Monday, a little bit cooler with a high of 60. 64 warming up into the 70s by the time we head into Tuesday and the week does stay mostly dry until we get to Friday. That's when we'll start to see a rain system move through with a cold front and you notice a steep drop in temperatures by the time we get into Saturday of next week and Sunday as well. So even though it will stay dry, it is also going to be much, much colder, feeling a lot more like winter. Thank you for joining us here for Coast TV News at 11. For more news and local weather, download our Coast TV News app. Saturday Night Live starts right now. Have a great night.